dispensation uh, will be given by Axel Paris from France. He's uh, now in South Africa developing a more business most If you want, we can make a siesta before the presentation. <laughs> so I will try to go quite fastly uh, on the figures and communicate with the visual. So I would like to thank Harinda and also Professor Dewan for inviting me to do a presentation and also Terence with whom we have developed the whole concept. So um, South Africa, it's not only South Africa, but generally the countries that are large cattle producers face inappropriate development strategies. Uh, firstly, the general vulnerability of the agricultural sector to drought. Uh, so when we do have the strong droughts, the carrying capacity decrease, so the stocksman sells the, the cattle and then the price goes down and the feed price goes up and so on. So it's quite, quite, uh, has a lot of impact on, on the industry and on its stability. And uh, secondly, uh, on the dependence of on conventional feeds that are becoming a more and more expensive option. Uh, and, uh, well, high feed prices combined with uh, higher drought cycles uh, reduce the margin and the profitability of, of the, this business. And, uh, and also the low stocking rates of, for example, one cattle for two to six, six hectares when it's on range lines in South Africa. So I wanted to make a few uh, presentation on the, the news, you know, on the droughts affecting the livestock industry in South Africa, in Limpopo, Northern Cape, Western Cape, Kenya, and so on. In Argentina in 2009, they lost 800,000 cattle. I mean, they died of out of hunger. And it's a phenomenon that affects heavily conventional crops. Um, C, C3 and C4 crops. And we see it even in Brazil, Uruguay, and southern Texas, places where, uh, where beef production and meat production are very uh, very important. Here is, for example, the cost for just Texas to the farmers in 2012. $7.6 billion. Australia, same thing. And so this industry didn't adapt to, to I mean, we, 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 did, we do not develop uh, appropriate solutions. So, this drought phenomenon combined to the world beef demand. So currently the world consumption of beef is around 70 million tons. And the annual growth is 1.2%. 1.2% it means that people consume 800,000 tons of beef extra each year. And to provide these 800,000 tons, you need 8 million tons of feed as a minimum. So where do you produce these 8 million tons of feed when you consider that half of the beef weight is uh, fattened in feedlots with conventional feeds, it's not with grass. This was a presentation made in Pretoria by, by an expert from USDA, I stole it from him, and uh, so he's expecting also combining with a lot of factors that cattle prices will go up while uh, pork and poultry will remain stable in the 10, 10 following years. So the challenge, well I will go fastly, it's using cactus, increasing primary plant production on non-arable land, using ruminants to digest these plants, and using insects to recover nutrients from the ruminant manure. So bioconversion as a recovery tool in regenerative agriculture, what is it? So the pioneer plant is cactus um, and are providing appropriate inputs for optimal vegetal 
biomass production, while converting veg vegetal biomass to meat through ruminants, while converting manure to protein meal through insects, and regenerating soils through massive organic matter turnover. So, these following pictures are from Turns Farm and Doug Street Farm. This is on different plots at different periods of the time. This was last September. This is the chopper of the cactus. All these pictures have been taken in Limpopo. And so this cactus is dried, partly dried during two to three days before being fed to cattle. This is a picture to show you the difference on the cactus production on shallow sandy soils when it's heavily fertilized with organic matter and the, the one at the right side haven't been fertilized with organic matter, but it has been fertilized four years ago <coughs> once. And, and you see that the cycle suddenly, the whole uh, biomass production becomes, uh, you, you upgrade the biomass production uh, phenomenally uh, when you, you bring the appropriate inputs, especially organic matter, to the soil. This was close to Messina uh, on Terence Farm, where he's putting the chopped cactus, dried on the sun, but dried completely, and then it goes through a mill, and then it's packed in, in, into bags and sold as flour to feed factories. Here's the stock of feed of cactus cladded meal. This is the close hookup of the, of the flower. This is the form that uh, Mr. DeWall showed, uh, shown just at the presentation before mine. And that was, uh, I think, was last September. And this was uh, one and a half months ago on the farm where now they have 850 50 cattle of all the races that you can find in South Africa. So in Guinea, Charolais, Brahmans, and uh, Bonsmara, and so on. And they have an impressive daily weight gain of 1.3 kilogram per day with an incorporation of 40% of cactus on a dry matter basis. So, so that's, that's phenomenal. It, this is a, I mean, feeding 800 cattle with this performance and with a feed price that is one third, one third of the conventional uh, feed cost. This is, this is really very important. Uh, so that's the first part of it. It's making use of non-usable land and secondly, being able to being able to reduce the cost of feed. What is really interesting in cactus is even with low uh, uh, low techniques that are we these people haven't invested a lot yet. But if you invest also more uh, more in appropriate equipment, then you can even lower the cost of feed produced on that land, and you can reach a phenomenal um, livestock production in areas that receives just 350 to 400 millimeters. This is one picture of last February, um, so one year ago, on our uh, pilot project on using uh, prickly pear uh, fruits and waste uh, to produce insects on the waste fruits uh, near Messina. And I will show the video you, so you will see. That's, that was one and a half months ago on manure, so on cow manure and poultry manure. So using insects to recover all the nutrients uh, from manure, which is very important because then the insects have such a high uh, digestibility and protein quality that you can use it for um, monogastric animals, agriculture, aquaculture. So this is, for example, the left picture is my hand, I washed my hands since I did, took the pictures. Uh, the 10 days old larvae and the 20 day old larvae that becomes darker. And this contains around 30% fat also. So you have a high energy density plus uh, a very
very good amino acid profile. What is the concept? Because we have to think on a macro scale, what is the impact? Uh, we, have a, uh, we have some farms that have proven the concept. We have proven also the use of uh, insects on a larger scale. So the idea is when we have one square kilometer and we have a production of 20 tons per hectare, so 2,000 tons of diameter per hectare, I didn't enter into, of course you don't feed the cactus alone, but if I included all the other aspects, it would be too complicated to show. It's, it's just schematically for people to understand. We obtain 150 tons of meat, carcass, not live weight. And then we, re we end up with 800 tons of dry matter manure. And then the manure, when we convert it to, to the black soldier fly larvae, we have a conversion rate of 10% dry matter to dry matter. So if you have 800 tons of dry matter manure, we end up with 80 tons of dry matter larvae, which ends up into 32 tons of protein and 25 tons of fat, which is, which is very important. And the second product is you end up with 400 tons of digested manure. This is not dry weight. This is not dry weight. So what does it represent? It represents that on one square kilometer you have 150 tons of red meat production potential and 80 tons of insect meal. And we, we have confirmed these figures. We, we have tested them. So that means we produce half a ton of insect meal for each ton of carcass that gets out of the exploitation. What, what does it mean? It means that it's equal, 80 tons of insect meal is equal to 50 tons of fish meal equivalent on amino acid basis. And to produce 50 tons of fish meal, you need to catch 175 tons of fresh fish from the sea to produce that meal. So that means that if we have a concept where we have 100, uh, 100 hectares or one square kilometer of cactus uh, properly managed with a properly managed feedlot, we can and, and, and a manure collection system, which have also a bioconversion shed where it's properly managed, we can end up recovering the equivalent of that amount of protein per square kilometer. And well, this is things that you know. I mean, because if we are in a system that's not really extensive, but more in intensive management, we can just year by year improve the, um, the organic matter content of the soil. So what was the potential on large scale? South Africa currently produced 800,000 tons of beef meat, plus 200,000 tons of game meat. So, but let's say to produce this one million ton of red meat could be produced on 7,000 square meters, uh, square kilometers. So which is less than 1% of South African land area. And which joins also the figures uh, communicated by Brazil. And I'm glad that it was communicated by Brazil so that people don't say that I've lied about this figure. And, and that could represent also half a million ton of insect meal produced. So what can be achieved? Uh, of course, with complementary feed and so on, we can achieve 100 to 270 tons of beef carcass per year, per square kilometer, depending on rainfall, of course. We can produce that figures if we are on 250 millimeters of rainfall in the Karoo. But if we are on 400, 450, or even 300, even if we were three, threefold lower uh, figures, it would be still interesting. And per comparison, what I was wanted to compare is what if we have one square kilometer of arable land on irrigated soybean and maize silage, we would get 120 tons of beef per year on average figures of average yields that you have on soybean and maize in South Africa. So this is also, well, it's not only on cactus, it was to show that you have a protein recovery from the primary plant production to the end, to the insect, you recover 13% of protein, which is tremendous when it's done on a large scale. Instead of giving back this 13% uh, 
uh, protein back to the soil as organic matter, you are giving, giving it back to the soil, but you are recovering it. It's like heat recovery, all the energy efficiency you know, schemes and so on. Here we have a technology that could allow to have very efficient agricultural production on um, on dry lands and arid arid climates and semi-arid climates. And most of the beef product production areas in the world are based, I mean, in Australia, Argentina, South Texas, and so on, are in semi-arid lands because it's better to grow also beef. It's, it's easier than having it in Manaus with all the rainfall. So I just want to, before I, I, I end up the presentation, I just want to show you the, the, the movie, well, I haven't been able to cut because I'm not a good movie maker. So, exactly. so you can see that the harvesting cuts from the yeah. You can see, you can see. And you can see what happens here with harvesting. Yeah. But this is this is the this is the plantation of carrots. Yeah. And so on the left is the the the, uh, the plantation where he didn't put the organic matter, and on the right side you see the difference. And and so he put that. Okay. And, uh, can, can you, you want me to leave it like this? Are we talking about things? No, two thousand seven. No, the organic matter. So so he put organic matter four years ago. So people were kind of impressed of the size of the small area. We can see now. This is now what it looks like in the ground here. Can you see? It's, and you can fucking smell it. It's like, it's like uh, yeah, and this is on sandy cock soil. There's no carbon. Yeah, it smells like this. This is so pretty. This is the worst thing that's realized. So, so this is the spot where I mean, it's, uh, the cactus leaves are chopped, where the, the chopper uh, turns from is much larger. So this is the the feed mixer uh, with the cattle feeding on on the on the how do you say on the ration with the cactus that has been dried partly dried. Um, under the sun, so you have all the different races, and, and, and they first go for the cactus, and then they eat the other thing. What is really important is the daily weight gain. I mean, the, and that, um, I mean, Doug is a veterinarian, so he has a very good knowledge of animals, and, and the animals were having, I mean, they are in good shape, and they are quite healthy, they are not, you know, struggling with uh, small performances. Here you see all the other animals, which is impressive. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 on that one it was, it was lower to 15 percent. So here I, I change, I change, and then when you get the, the manure. Uh, <laughs> so, but this was one year ago with the cactus pier. So it was probably the first larvae that has fed on that scale on cactus waste. So this is this is the, the, the black soldier larvae. Yeah, perfect. Because it's it's. Look, look at the density of the larvae eating the, the fruits and so on, so they love it. So, we shall prepare a good dinner with this tonight. We have muffins with uh, cactus flower and, and this flower. So this is this is when it's harvested and ten ten days old. This this was raised on manure, not on canvas. And uh, and this is I mean 
when when yeah. <laughs> so, but the idea is not is not to see of course all the chickens they would be, and the fish they, they die for this diet I mean 40 percent protein and 30 percent uh, fat but what it has a protein a tremendous potential on you know even if it's Medium, medium large scale, or even smaller scale, it has a, a, a true potential to um, increase livestock production, meat production, uh, especially with an orientation of on semi-arid environments, and also to regenerate. I mean, Luwero was saying that uh, in uh, Sicily they were planting opuntia on on the lava, on the uh, and that 20 years later they came and plant. Uh, uh, Avenia, yeah. uh, grapes, grapes, grapes. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 that's the same thing. So we could eventually regenerate soils in places where soil is is really uh, uh, unsuitable for agriculture by combining simple and appropriate techniques uh, on a on a on a critical mass. Because this is also important to have a critical mass on what you are doing, so that you can generate money and increase the size of what you are doing. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jackson. That was very, very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex. It was very interesting and challenging. What, what kind of insect is that? And I wish to know if you if you have a, um, a startup, or if you have a startup, if you put the insect or the how yeah. do you do it? In yeah. fact, we, we, we developed this technology firstly in France, and then in Turkey, and then in South Africa one and a half year ago, uh, more than one and a half year ago. And, and we developed it with students, and uh, now we are taking it to a larger scale. So, the insect is called black soldier fly. And it, it, in, in fact, what, why it's interesting? Because the, the insect it has a very high conversion rate, dry matter to dry matter. For example, house fly has, uh, it's, it's a pest, and the black soldier fly isn't a pest. It doesn't carry. Um, uh, disease and so on. Where is originated? It's it's from the south of the United States, but it has been spread all over the world. I mean, you have it in Italy, you have it in Sardinia, you have it, uh, you have it in South Africa. Uh, not in Messina because it's too dry, but on all the coastal place around Durban, you, 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 you can find it. You have a startup in San Lazaro, or? Yeah, you must start with the stock first. Yeah. Before I come to the question, just a piece of information for the animal production people here, that FAO has come up with a, a document, a review, uh, insects as animal feed. It gives all, it's not the one with the forestry people have come up, it gives uh, the amino acid composition, nutritive value, uh, to what extent you can add in fish diet, pig diet and all that. Uh, this has been uh, published in Animal Feed Science and Technology three months back. Just, uh, uh, yeah, also, we, yeah, we met with Harinder at the World uh, insect, insect to Feed the World conference. And by the way, in that conference, the participants were fed the pizza containing insects. <laughs> and then participants really loved it. Uh, except, excellent work, integration of insects into that. Some of the concerns and questions. Well, first is the comment. Have you thought of, of course, it's 30% oil in it. Mm -hmm. Have you thought of isolating oil 30% and then taking it to biodiesel? Yeah, 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 we have, uh, there is some techniques that are, uh, that are used already for fish meal production because fish also contains oil, in fact, uh, that are used uh, quite cost efficiently to separate the fat out of the, out of the insect. You either, either make a soup uh, when it's wet or either process it when it's dry. Because if you uh, would add this as a protein source to get a diet, with 30% uh, yeah. I'm just uh, yeah. looking at your, your business model. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it has to go to insects as animal feed. No, in fact, the fat, in fact, this insect meal will never be used for ruminants. Okay. Why? Because it, it is a replacement of fish meal. Fish meal costs $1,500 a ton. 
So this insect meal is between $600 and $900 a ton. So it's not cost efficient, especially in a country where meat costs just 22 rands a kilo. So uh, it's, not, it's not interesting to, to, to feed cattle with such a uh, high quality insect meal. The, the real potential is to use it only for aquaculture and agriculture. Uh, and, and, and we don't think it's just a replacement of fish meal and protein on that, on that basis. Any data on basis of pesticide residues and animals? Uh, we, we did the, 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 the tests and we don't have any heavy metal residue on uh, larvae that have been feeding on industrial poultry in South Africa. So because, I mean, the chicken are being fed feed that normally shouldn't contain heavy metal. So if they haven't been fed, that they end up with uh, manure that doesn't have a high concentration of heavy metals. We, we, are, we, are, be, we are below the limits on heavy metals, and we, do, we have, we have we are at very low levels of heavy metals. If you are feeding cactus to your animals and using their metal, and if the cactus have been sprayed with pesticide... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, of course. That, that you, can, you, you could eventually end up with pesticide, but probably you will have less pesticide in the insect meal than in the, in the, in the apple that you will buy from Woolworths. Mm -hmm. Because the apple that you will find at Woolworths will have been uh, sprayed at least 15 times. But the insect have been eat, eating uh, vegetal material that has been already digested, so the pesticide is already kind of degraded and then degraded again. So you have two trophic chains before uh, before being uh, fed to animals. That's, that's one more question about the, um, we we control the cochineal with insects, so there's no more residue of chemicals anymore. We've kept cochineal under control now for more than three years using beneficial insects again. Thank you. Okay. Just a quick question. How about deworming the cattle with ivermectin or some other deworming? Does it affect the bugs? Uh, it's a good question, but we haven't um, uh, made a test with cattle that have been treated with deworming uh, medicine. But probably it could have an effect, I'm sure. But then you find a solution because you don't, you don't deworm continuously. You deworm, let's say, every three months or every four months. Then when you deworm, you can just take the, the, the manure uh, out of the power conversion, and then one week later, you get give back. I mean, you have always solution for this kind of problems. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Watson. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. one more question. Any question? The residue left after insect production, what will you do with that residue? And the residue is, is really a perfect uh, digested, it's a perfect compost because it has been eaten by microorganisma, micro then degraded by microorganisma. Uh, uh, and then when you give back all three manure that has been digested from this, and we are conducting the trials now, but it's not yet uh, finished, I'm sure that the cactus will go mad uh, with, the, with the manure that is given back. And it's, it's the whole concept. It's really improving continuously the primary plant production on the field uh, by integrating uh, uh, with the proper management of livestock and, and insect uh, technologies. Thank you. After the next presentation, the final one, a photograph will be taken, so please do not bounce, don't disappear. And we have to be on the schedule of the